Today's Parliament House represents many things to many people. An evolving democracy, the strength of a vibrant state, a place to debate ideas, a vehicle for change and an office to work in. It is also a functioning reminder of our wonderful architectural heritage and a glimpse into the earliest days of our colony. However, as with the evolution of any space, over the years there have been challenges to meet. The current Parliament House is testament to the ingenuity of those who have been part of her story. Today, we take a journey from the very earliest days of this building and explore how the need for functionality has combined with the desire to maintain this invaluable part of the heritage of New South Wales, all of which have culminated in the building that we now know as Parliament House. It's a tale of representation, renovation and rum. In the early 19th century, our colony had no money available to build much needed civil infrastructure. Whilst the public coffers were empty, the black market rum trade was booming. An opportunity arose to use rum as an alternate form of currency, leading to an agreement, the building of a new hospital in return for a monopoly on the lucrative rum trade. To this day, the parliament is still referred to as the rum hospital. While the hospital was under construction, the rum trade was not as lucrative as hoped, and as a result, corners were cut. The building shortcomings caused Francis Greenway, the colony's first civil architect, to declare that it must soon fall to ruin. This was the start of the building that we recognise today as Parliament House. In the 1820s, the colony took its first steps towards self-government and the Legislative Council moved into the northern wing of the Rum Hospital. On its establishment in 1856, the Legislative Assembly also accommodated within the hospital building and the Parliament began to take the form that we recognise today. Over the years, ongoing work continued on Parliament House, including the building of the Parliamentary Library Reading Room, now known as the Jubilee Room in 1906, which is covered by a beautiful stained glass ceiling. However, it wasn't until the 1970s that many of the talked about plans to expand the building finally came to fruition. In 1975, back buildings were demolished and a new building was erected behind the restored chambers. This new section housed modern amenities for members and their staff with the completed work officially opened in 1984, over 150 years since the original building was constructed. The addition of individual offices for MPs, a purpose-built library, parking, catering facilities and a gym made it one of the very best parliamentary buildings of its day. 25 years on and the building was once again being upgraded to meet modern needs. In line with the changing security environment, a new guardhouse was constructed in 2009, providing a secure entrance in the northwestern corner of the Speaker's Garden. And in 2013, Parliament commenced another expansion project to provide an additional workspace for parliamentary staff. With the goal of maintaining the original ambience, style and heritage of the building, a challenge was set for the architect to fit the new office block within the existing architectural footprint. The same architects that designed the 1970s extension came up with an ingenious solution. A suspended office wing was built directly over the Jubilee Room. A series of steel frames and supports ensures minimal stress on the age structure, while smart lighting means that the Jubilee Room's stained glass ceiling retains a spectacular glow. Currently, 39 staff from the Department of Parliamentary Services, including the Executive Manager, occupy this office space, which is finally suspended within the confines of the original building. Truly an architectural marvel. While less dramatic in scale, other improvements have made the Parliament compliant with modern building and access regulations. Even the Assembly Chamber, also known as the Bear Pit, has improved. Air conditioning has been installed to make life more comfortable whatever the political temperature. Parliament House is not only a place where we are represented. Importantly, it now also provides a spectacular public space for art exhibitions, public events and seminars. 
The very real and meaningful contribution that the Parliament makes in hosting these events is a testament to the ongoing cultural and historical significance of the building to New South Wales. Visitors can also enjoy the Parliament's first ever public cafe, which allows them to pause and truly appreciate this great building. Essential to any visitor experience, the building also provides a gift shop, allowing the purchase of souvenirs. Accessibility for all has been a major focus of the latest projects to improve the building and much work has been done to ensure that all visitors have access to this wonderful building. Heritage buildings pose a unique challenge in the modern era. Social, technological and environmental changes mean that Parliament has had to become a much more inclusive place. This is a challenge that Parliament House and the people of Sydney have been happy to accept. The ongoing use and relevancy of this building are testament to the value of the place. Preserving the beauty of this building, whether it be through the smart integration of fibre optic cabling or simply by giving it a fresh coat of paint, is an important and ongoing task. So, much like democracy itself, we will continue to find new and innovative ways to make the home of representative democracy in New South Wales relevant to people's lives.